Hello everyone, welcome back. Today we are going to continue from our previous lesson 8.1 to 8.2 which is the mechanism of breathing. So as usual, I hope you are ready to take notes and let's do this. Okay, the learning objectives for this subtopic is only one. Well, you must only be able to compare and contrast the breathing mechanism in humans and in animals. But for that, you have to learn through the breathing mechanism in the animals and also in the humans. So, let's do this. Okay, the breathing mechanism uh, in general. Humans and animals have different breathing mechanisms. Breathing refers to the repetitive inhalation and exhalation process. So today we are going to look into the breathing mechanism in insect, frog, fish and humans. We have learned in previous lesson about the respiratory structures. Now we just go through the mechanism of breathing, how they breathe. Nothing more in detail. Okay, so let's look into the breathing mechanism in insects. Now, for inactive smaller insects, uh, gases exchange in their tracheal system happens through simple diffusion. Yeah, but for larger insects like grasshopper, the abdominal muscles will relax and contract to enable the air to go in and out of the muscles. So as you can see in the slide here, now let's look at when they inhale. When inhaling air, the abdominal muscle will relax and this will reduce the air pressure in the trachea. So, and the air can enter into the trachea through the spiracles. So during exhalation, the abdominal muscle will contract and the air is exhaled when the air pressure in the trachea uh, increases and forces the air out of the spiracles. Okay, let's look into the breathing mechanism of fish. The breathing mechanism of fish is aided by its mouth movement and the operculum. Mouth and operculum. Ventilation takes place when the fish swims by opening and closing its operculum. So this will push water into the mouth and subsequently through the gills. The ventilation will increase the flow of water in the respiratory surface. Now let's look into inhalation and exhalation. Now during inhalation, the mouth opens and the floor of the buccal cavity is lowered. At the same time, the opercular cavity is enlarged okay, and the operculum opening is closed. So this reduces the pressure in the buccal cavity and water from the outside which contains the dissolved oxygen can enter through the mouth. Okay, now during exhalation, the mouth is closed, correct? And the floor of the buccal cavity is raised, opposite from inhalation. So the water will enter through the gill lamina and the gases exchange uh, between the blood and the water occurs through diffusion okay so at the same time the opercular muscle relaxes and the opercular cavity becomes smaller so when the cavity is smaller the volume of the buccal, cal buccal cavity is reduced and the pressure in the buccal cavity becomes higher than the pressure outside so the high pressure will cause the water to flow out through the operculum opening. Okay, so let's look into the breathing mechanism of frogs. Now, frogs breathe through the mouth and the lungs while in active state. So during inhalation, when the frog breathes through the nostrils, the mouth and glutes are closed and the floor of the bucopharyngeal cavity is lowered. The low air pressure in the mouth cavity will draw the air into the bucopharyngeal cavity through the nostrils. Okay, next, to channel the 
air into the lungs. The glottis opens and the nostril now will close. And then the floor of the bucopharyngeal cavity is raised. The increased air pressure pushes the air into the lungs. So in exhalation, the lungs contract, the air is expelled from the lungs and this is helped by the abdominal pressure and the elasticity of the lungs. Some air is expelled through the nostrils while the rest is mixed with the air in the bucopharyngeal cavity. Okay, so let's look at the breathing mechanism in humans. Now, the breathing mechanism in humans allow oxygen to be supplied to the lungs while expelling out carbon dioxide. Okay, so the pair of lungs within the uh, thorax have no muscles. So the expansion and the deflation of the lungs is controlled by the movement of ribcage and diaphragm. The movement of this ribcage is actually controlled by two sets of muscles the external intercostal muscle and the internal intercostal muscles. Now, the external intercostal muscle is located in between the ribs and the muscle fibers slanting towards the sternum, while the internal intercostal muscle is located in between the ribs with the muscle fibers running at the right angle to the external intercostal muscle, as you can see in the picture on the slide. Now, both intercostal muscles move antagonistically where when one muscle, muscle uh, contract, the other will relax. So, they work the opposite way. One contract, one relax and the other way around. Now, let's look into inhalation. Now, during inhalation, the internal intercostal muscle will relax. External intercostal muscle will contract. Okay? So, when this happens, the rib cage will move upwards and up, outwards. The diaphragm will now contract and flatten. Okay, then the volume in the thoracic cavity will increase, which causes the pressure in the lungs or the alveoli to decrease. So, when the pressure in the lungs is low compared to the pressure outside in the atmosphere, then the air can move in from high pressure to low pressure. So, now let's look into the exhalation. Exhalation is the opposite of inhalation. So, in exhalation, the inter internal intercostal muscle will now contract. The external intercostal muscle will now relax. So, when this happens, the rib cage from upwards is now will move downwards and inwards. Okay, then the diaphragm will now relax. Now, the volume of the thoracic cavity will decrease and the pressure will increase. So, when pressure in the lungs increases, it will push the air out from the lungs. So that's the process between inhalation and exhalation, the mechanism in human. Okay, let's look at one question I would like to ask you, the horse question time. Now, why are the lungs of amphibians not as efficient as human lungs? Well, uh, the amphibian uh, lungs are much simpler compared to the human lungs. Amphibian lungs, for example, do not have a ribcage or a diaphragm that helps in the expansion and the compression of the lungs. Well, the rest, you can figure it out yourself. And lastly, to be able to understand the topic and to achieve the objective, you must be able to compare and contrast the breathing mechanism in humans and animals. Well, the summary of whatever we have discussed in this lesson is on page 135. So you can uh, differentiate there, you can go through the similarity and the differences of the breathing mechanism in humans and in animals. Okay, with that, we are done and as usual, you have to do the formative practice. So, in this case, formative practice 8.2. Now, what are the questions? The questions are, number one, state the function of the spiracle in the breathing mechanism of insect. Number two, how do abdominal muscles help insects to breathe? 
tree state the two differences between the respiratory mechanism of fish and humans and lastly explain the mechanism of inhalation in humans i hope you can answer all this question once you have gone through this lesson with that said we are done for today's lesson i hope you can answer all the questions you understand the subtopic if you do don't forget to like and subscribe my channel